get a good feeling, yeah. How's it going, you guys? This is Chris with Fire TV Solutions 518. It's been a real crazy week. A lot of stuff has gone on. Stuff has made our service go down, but we finally are starting to get it back up. Here's what you got to do to get the new apps on your Fire Stick. First thing we got to do is make sure we go to all apps and get rid of any old apps we have uh, for Fire TV Solutions. We're going to do this by hitting the button with the three lines on it over the app and then going to uninstall and selecting OK. You're going to do that with any Fire TV Solutions app you have um, so that way we can go ahead and start from scratch. And then we're going to go to my store. It's in the file linked app, which looks just like this, green lines, white lines, and a gray icon. Once you have it open, you're going to go to my store, which is code 757-84571. Again, that's 757-84571. And then you're going to go ahead and hit continue. And that will let you right into Chris's Fire TV Solutions store. If you scroll down just a little bit, you're going to go into the Members app area. If anything pops up, just dismiss. But under Member Apps, you'll see Fire TV Solutions Volume 1 and Volume 2. We are going to go ahead and start the download for both of them by clicking on the little arrows that point down to the lines. Once they're both downloaded, we are going to open up Fire TV Solutions Volume 1 and start the installation for that by clicking on the play symbol there to the right of the application name and then clicking on install. All right, once it's installed, we are going to select open. And that will bring us into Chris's Fire TV Solutions Volume 1. Once it's open, you will want to scroll all the way down and accept the terms of use. Once you've accepted, you're going to click on add user or add new user and then go down to login with Extreme Codes API. That's going to let you use your username, password, and use our URL to log in. Uh, under any name, you're going to put anything there. Um, doesn't matter. Me personally, I'm going to input Fire TV Solutions. Okay, and then you're going to hit next, input your username, and then your password. All right, so I've got my username in. I'm not going to show you guys the password here, so I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through that. And then we're going to input the URL to give you access to the service. The URL is going to be tv.firetvsolutions.tk colon 8000. Again, it's tv.firetvsolutions.tk colon 8000. You can pause the video here if you need to. But once you have that, you're going to log in and then click on your username to start downloading channels, movies, and series. Once you're into the app, you're actually going to go ahead and go to Settings, located in the top right, and then click on General Settings. Once you're in General Settings, you're going to want to uncheck the box for Auto Start on Boot Up, and then go down to Save Changes. That's going to bring you back out to the main screen, so we're going to go back into Settings. Then we're going to go to Time Format and select 12 hour format so that way it's not in military time and then save changes. So the next two steps are very important, very, very important. Those are player selection and player settings. When we go into player selection, we're going to add player and we're going to add both MX player and VLC. So we're going to click MX player and add and then go back in and add VLC player as well. I'm going to make everything but live tv and live tv with guide mx player pro if you prefer vlc you can use that if you happen to have any lip sync issues with mx player i'm um, sorry with the built-in player you're going to want to select mx player for live tv as well 
Um, and in player settings, most importantly, you want to change it from software decoder to hardware decoder. That's going to make the video play much smoother. And then we're going to hit save changes. And lastly, we're going to go to our multi-screen section. I like to uncheck the show multi-screen pop-up because I usually know what I'm uh, going to be using, whether I have two connections or four connections. If you have four connections, you can use the first two. If you have two connections, you can use any of the second two. I like the last one personally. So I'm going to select that and then go to save. And that's everything that we're going to be doing in settings. So now we're going to go into live TV. And in the top right hand corner, there's three dots. You're going to click on that. And there's refresh channels, movies and series, which we're going to click. You're going to click on that in the future if you ever uh, need your channels updated, want to refresh the channels. It's showing sport events for the previous day, or it's not showing the pay-per-view events you're looking for. Usually refreshing channels helps. And then we're going to go back and also refresh TV Guide. You're going to do this if your TV Guide info is down or not accurate. Refreshing TV Guide always helps with that as well. All right, so now that it's refreshed the TV guide, it's going to bring you back to the home screen. That's pretty much everything we're doing in here. Um, Catch-ups at the bottom there, the multi-screen option, and live with EPG is going to be your TV guide. You're going to disregard the movies and series icons since the service currently took those down for the safety of the customers. Uh, but you still have all the other functionality here. So let's go back into FileLink, and we're going to now install Fire TV Solutions Volume 2 which is an XCIP TV player app and um, is the other application we use for my service. All right, once that's installed, we're gonna open it just like we did the other app and we're going to use our credentials to log into the service. Here you just need the username and password. So I'm gonna enter my username, skip the password portion and then sign in. If it asks you to allow anything, you're going to hit allow. And then it's going to update everything for you. Now from this point on, you should be able to go ahead and uh, play live TV or go to TV guide. Um, but what I would personally go ahead and do is go into settings and change my player to VLC player. Personally, um, I like VLC player in this app. You can use EXO player, um, but I just personally like VLC better. Um, you go down to the bottom left for your multi-screen, your favorites is there, you have your live TV, TV guide, and your catch up at the bottom. Um, but that's pretty much it. Now that you have both of these uh, installed, you should be able to utilize the service. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and leave it in the comments or contact me personally. Um, the only other thing we have to do is we're going to go back to our home screen, go to see all apps, and we're going to move these apps to the front. So that way, whenever we hit the home button, um, we're going to be able to access these apps first. So you're going to hover over the app, hit the button with the three lines on your remote, and then move to front. I like volume one ahead of volume two, so I'm just going to do that switch here. But now when you hit the home button, you'll see that volume one and volume two are there. So that way you can easily access them. But that should go ahead and do it. Uh, once again, this is Chris with Fire TV Solutions 518, and I hope this video helped out. Have a good one.